Hello, and welcome to this Amplify session in which we will be talking about OpenSpedia and how the Amplify framework is going to help integrate your application with the AWS video capabilities. My name is Lucas and I'm a Solutions Architect here at AWS. Let's get started. Before we get into the technical details of the session, I just wanted to share up some stats with you that are up on the screen, just to really highlight the role that media and video have been playing into delivering content down to your users. We can see that almost 50% of the top 100 applications contain at least some form of media. We can also see that 78% of people watch videos on a weekly basis. Let's think about video on demand platforms, live streaming platforms. We can also see that 68% of people prefer to learn via video. You know, the rise of educational content portals is getting going bigger and bigger every day. So when you add all that up, it's still not surprised that estimates are putting that 82% of the global traffic will come from video in less than two years. And that's pretty impressive when you think about the amount of data that goes through the platform on a daily basis. To think about that 82% of that comes in the form of video is pretty mind blowing. So how do you actually get your content down to your users? Well, I think there are a few steps that we'll go through one by one. The first one is probably the hardest. You have to create the content. Uh, you have to get your recording equipment out and you have to record it until you're happy with what you wanted to create. From then on, we go into an encoding process in which we, you will process your content and transform it into different formats that will allow you to stream that content down to your users rather than them having to download the entire file. After that, you have to host the content. The content has to live somewhere, has to reside somewhere before you can deliver it. Once you've decided on that, you want to deliver that content. And one of the most common ways of delivering that content today is through a content delivery network or a CDN. In the case of AWS, that would be CloudFront, but you can use any other CDN that you like. The reason that we do in that is because a CDN will put your content as close as possible to the user's device. So by the time that they go and <coughs> watch your videos, you know, the latency between your content and the device is as minimal as possible. So what's the role Amplify is playing here? Well, if you use Amplify for a while and you will play with some of the other categories like authentication or API, for example, those are actually plugins that are built into the CLI. Now, what you may not know is that CLI allows you to create plugins as well. So while some of the plugins are, you know, we can call it first party plugins and have been built by the Amplify team, it allows you, you and anyone to create third party plugins that everyone in the ecosystem can leverage on. So if that's something that you're interested in, in sort of exploring a bit further, I recommend you to follow the link up on the screen. Uh, you can also join the Amplify plugin Discord channel, and I, I guess you will help all the, you get all the help that you need there to get started. So one of those third-party plugins that we'll be talking about today is this video plugin. Now, from a, from a command and usability perspective, we'll see that in a day one just a little bit on how it works, but it follows really you know, the standard amplify approach you know, in the commands, com you know, the convention and naming conventions that you, that you expect from all sort of the other categories in Amplify. But what it does is behind the scenes, it allows you to stand up video on demand or live streaming capabilities in the AWS platform just in minutes and after a few only commands. It works alongside existing resources, it works alongside new resources, it allows you to leverage existing infrastructure, everything that you come to expect out of the Amplify CLI. You can also do this with the Amplify video plugin. It's obviously quite opinionated. Uh, we want to make it very easy for you to stand up and integrate that infrastructure. So it's quite, a, quite, a, uh, quite opinionated in the way that it does things. But also because it's all built through CloudFormation, there's nothing stopping you to, from really changing those templates uh, as you see fit if you wanted to change a little bit the approach that we'll be taking into sort of developing that backend infrastructure. So what we'll do now is I'll walk you through three different architectures that the Amplify video sort of creates for you. Um, the first one, this is this is a live use case. This is using the AWS Elemental suite of services. So in the case that you do, you, they get a high amount of users and you don't really, really need high customization, the Elemental suite is unbeatable. This is the way that you wanna go through. But you really, you really, really need to know what you're doing. So this is 
out of the three approaches that we'll be showing you today, find the one that you really need that expertise uh, and your capabilities to sort of really know what you're doing. The second one is the video on demand. Um, so it uses, obviously, if you're, again, like what we were talking before, it uses the API and the auth categories. So if you see Cognito up on the screen, that's being used by the auth category with the auth plugin in Amplify, uh, as well as the API one with the creating a GraphQL endpoint for you. Uh, and this one allows you to create a video on demand platform in which you, know, you can sort your content like we were talking about before, you know, encoding it, uh, putting that into the right, right format, you know, creating that cloud fund distribution that allows you to deliver it down to your users. But you can also see that in the top, uh, up on the screen here, you can also see that you can create a, create a content management and metadata architecture or service, if you will, that allows you to to add and which your videos as you go along. The third one uh, is the interactive live, the live streaming capability, which is probably one of the ones that we're most excited about, uh, especially with the release of this new IBS or interactive video service just a couple of weeks ago. So the interactive video service has been built on Twitch's backbone. Twitch is the live stream platform. Um, I, I said the difference between the other ones, if you can see, and I'll show you a for a second, you know, think about all the you know, moving pieces that all the architectures have. And in this case, this is streaming category for the video plugin. Uh, it's really a black box. You stand there, we could have a black box for you. Uh, it allows you to stream HLS streams with video from the latency down to your client. We'll see the, the different uh, latency options that you can choose, but if you if you want ultra low latency, uh, this is under five seconds latency, uh, which is really good for streaming content. And on top of that, we create a, a time metadata lambda function that allows you to reach the streaming that you're putting onto your users. So if you wanted to uh, put some some extra content on top of your live streaming capabilities, you could do that through that metadata function. In summary, this interactive video service that we released a couple of weeks ago is a fully managed service. You know, it provides an input endpoint that allows you to stream an output URL that you can go and watch from. The time metadata that syncs with the video allows you to create interactive content. So if you wanted to overlay things on top of your video, you know, that'll be the service that you use to sort of enrich that streaming functionality. From a roadmap perspective, uh, video on demand support has been released. Uh, IBS support uh, in the amplified video category is it's been released, but it's currently in beta. Uh, there's also a plain component uh, for front end, so uh, you know, amplify also on top of so, uh, making it really easy to create back end infrastructure. It also comes with a set of components that you can use in your application. So, one of those components that we're building uh, is a player component as well as an uploading component that will make quite easy to sort of get that content up on the AWS platform. There's also uh, the advanced settings that we're working on, and there's a lot more to come. Um, there's also, I wanted to invite you to the to the repo. So the, all of this is, is open source, so you can come in, create issues, create pull requests, feel free to contribute, feel free to go through the, uh, through the call, uh, and really, really, really you know, encourage you to participate. So let's go and see a little bit of a demo right now. Okay. So we are down in our console right now. We're inside a folder. The folder contains an Amplify project. Uh, we're running a status command just to see what resources have been created already. Nothing's been created so far in this environment. So we'll go ahead and add a video resource. So this will sort of follow the wizard style approach of Amplify, uh, like any other project that you've been doing, we'll be asking you uh, a couple of questions before we go ahead and create your resources. The first question will be to choose from one of our three requirements and one of the three architectures that we showed you beforehand. Uh, in this case, we'll choose video demand. Uh, we'll give it a name. Uh, this will be asking us what sort of encoding do we want to use. Uh, we can use adaptive bitrate, which is probably the recommended one for most use cases. If you wanted to use a fixed uh, bitrate, we can choose 1080p with 30 frames and accelerated transcoding, or we can also use, choose uh, 1080p with 30 frames without accelerated transcoding. Uh, if none of these do it for you, you can always bring your own template. 
but in this case we'll be using the default HLS adaptive build rate. This is now asking us whether this is a production environment. Uh, we we'll go ahead and say yes. By saying yes, this will be creating a cloud front distribution for us, uh, like we were discussing before, to help us sort of delivering the content down to our users. Um, whether we want to protect uh, our content with sign URLs, in, the, uh, in practice, we'll probably say yes. In this case, we'll say no, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, but if you've done sign URLs with CloudFront before, uh, you know that it might be a bit of a cumbersome project. So by saying yes, uh, the plugin will also create the necessary backend infrastructure to sort of support that out of the box. So we'll go ahead and say no. Uh, now we want to uh, know if we want to integrate our resources with a GraphQL API to manage our resources and we want to say yes. Uh, at the moment, uh, the plugin only works with GraphQL. Uh, it will support uh, REST in the future, so we'll go ahead and select GraphQL. We'll give it a name. Uh, we'll default our authentication and authorization down to Cognito. We'll leave everything as default. Do we want to do any advanced setting changes to the GraphQL API? We don't really want to do that now. Um, it's asking us whether we have a GraphQL annotated schema. We don't. So we can just select one uh, sample model type. Uh, it's asking us whether we want to edit the schema right now. We don't want to edit the schema right now. Uh, it's asking us around what is it that uh, we can do in our schema. So who, who can actually upload videos, who can actually see our videos. We'll keep the default stuff for now. We don't want to override the schema, uh, but we do want to edit our newly created model. So we'll say a yes. So this will be open, wrapping Visual Studio Code. Give it a bit of zoom so you guys can see. So you can see the plugin will create two, two different types, uh, two different GraphQL types uh, that are fully annotated just to work with AWS AppSync. Uh, and if you wanted to do a bit more on these uh, options, you can. Um, where it says, oh, see, do not edit, uh, this is required by the plugin, so we don't want to go ahead and delete those. Uh, but for example, for this type, we, we cannot delete it, but we could potentially add uh, a few more information if we wanted to. Uh, in this particular case, we can also say uh, actors, and this could be. No, an array of strings um, in this particular case. So once we're done with that, we'll tell Amplify that we're done, and that's it. We'll run our status command again. And it just shows us, you know, that it's creating you know, a few user pools, an API that's going to create and you know my video category now shows up in there as well <coughs> we'll go ahead and create a different one in this case we'll create the interactive uh, video service one the live streaming one again we'll select a name for it uh, this is very simple it's asking us which one do we want the quality of the stream to be yeah 1080 uh, for HD streams or 480 for this standard definition streams. Uh, this is the latency requirements that we have, you know, ultra low latency requirements, which we, we, we mentioned that it was under five seconds. And standard latency at the moment is, is around the 10 second mark. Uh, but if you're using you know, uh, streaming with tools like OBS, you can sort of define your latency uh, in there as well. And that's it. Uh, this is very simple, um, you know, this is all that's required by IBS, the rest is being managed by uh, AWS. Uh, we'll run another status command just to see how, how that shows. And we can see that now we have two video resources that are to be created, uh, one for VLDs and one for live streaming. So we'll skip this, we won't create it just now uh, because it will take a while. So we'll, we'll jump into this tab right now that has some resources completed. And we can see that I created a, a video uh, category here already. Uh, and the last thing that I want to show you is with the video, I can go ahead and get some information on what is it that I've been created. So when I 
go ahead and say video uh, get dash info uh, it will allow me to choose between my video projects uh, in this case I only have one but if I had more than one I had a, a, a list to choose from and here it's giving me you know all the necessary information for me to create my you know BOD or uh, you know on demand video platform um, if you if you were to do this for the IBS uh, resource you'll see uh, as you know the URL uh, to stream to that you would plug into OBS uh, and the URL that your people uh, that your you know, users can log in uh, and start watching your stream so that's all I have today from a demo perspective I hope you enjoyed it uh, we'll be answering some questions as well uh, after this so see you soon